Hey guys, Dr. David Jockers here, and we're gonna talk about five major strategies to heal chronic inflammation and autoimmunity. And this is so critical. We know so many people are dealing with chronic inflammatory conditions. So, I mean, if you're out there and you're dealing with neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, then this video is for you. If you're out there and you're dealing with autoimmune disease, like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, issues like that, eczema. You know, this is for you if you're out there and you're dealing with asthma and allergies, right? Or maybe you have a family history of one of these kinds of conditions and you just wanna make sure you don't get it, then this video is for you. And so five key things, and there's tons of things that we can go into. In fact, you know, I've written numerous articles about advanced strategies to reduce inflammation in the body but five key things we're gonna focus on today. The first one is you gotta heal your gut. You know, that's really where it starts. When the gut lining becomes damaged, it opens up, basically, the gut lining is one cell wall, right? And so it's like a cheesecloth where there's small holes where digested food particles are able to seep through the gut lining and into the bloodstream where the body is now able to absorb nutrients. What happens though is when we're eating food that our body doesn't tolerate well or we're under a lot of stress, it ends up causing damage and cause gapping holes in that gut lining. So the cheesecloth rips. Now we've got large holes where undigested food particles are gonna seep into the bloodstream, bacteria, yeast, things like that. And the immune system is gonna go haywire. It thinks, oh my gosh, this is a serious issue. It increases immunity, causes inflammation to other areas of our body, also can lead to things like adrenal fatigue and all different types of issues. So when that happens, clearly we got major issues. So we've got to heal the gut. And so we want to stick with gut healing foods, right? Things like bone broth, which very, very good for helping heal the gut. We also want to do things like probiotics, possibly fermented foods, which can be extremely good. Things like sauerkraut and kimchi and um, apple cider vinegar, coconut water keeper, things like that can be really, really good. A high quality collagen protein powder can be really good. Collagen's a major component, the major protein that makes up our gut lining. So collagen helps to, in a sense, heal and seal the gut. We got tons of minerals in the bone broth. We've got collagen protein in there already, or you can supplement with collagen protein. These things are great for the gut. We also want to make sure we're getting good fiber sources. You know, things like carrots, for example, really, really good for the gut lining. Cooked foods oftentimes. So steamed foods, soups, and, and, uh, and, and shakes. So food that's already, in a sense, broken down. So whether we're doing soups, whether we're doing steamed veggies, um, it's, pre, it's broken down, therefore making it easier in our digestive system. Smoothies, doing things like coconut milk and coconut oil and coconut butter in your smoothie can be amazing using um, possibly a high quality protein powder that your gut is able to tolerate. This can be amazing for helping heal, heal leaky gut. And going right into that, the second big thing is eliminate any sort of food sensitivities. You know, the most common things that people with autoimmune and chronic inflammatory conditions are susceptible to, or they have food sensitivities to, are things like gluten. You may have heard of that. You know, that's a major protein. We find it in things like wheat, barley, rye, kamut, spelt. A lot of oats are cross-contaminated with gluten. We wanna make sure we get rid of gluten. Most dairy, particularly dairy protein, uh, can also be an inflammatory agent. So you can do things like grass-fed butter or even better grass-fed ghee where they've taken all the protein, the lactose out of it, and that works great, okay? When I'm working with autoimmune or chronic inflammatory conditions, I have them use ghee, which is loaded with butyrate, one of the best, uh, best small short chain fatty acids for helping our gut lining heal. So ghee can be amazing for individuals with autoimmune disease, but stay off of the other dairy, at least for a period of time. Things like eggs, which it's so unfortunate because eggs are loaded with nutrients. However, if you're having chronic inflammation, you may have a sensitivity to eggs. We know that, for example, 93% of people with gallbladder issues, and gallbladder and the thyroid have a key connection. Oftentimes people with gallbladder issues also have thyroid issues and, and vice versa. So those in 93% with gallbladder issues actually had problems, they had sensitivity to eggs. So taking eggs out for a period of time can be amazing for you. Also things like nightshade vegetables. We know 26% of our population does not, they have a sensitivity, they have inflammation when they eat nightshades like potatoes, tomatoes, I know, tomatoes, we love them. Bell peppers, gosh, gotta lose those as well. Um, and things like eggplants, no eggplant parmesan, unfortunately, that's dairy and eggplant, 
right? And tomato, right? Oftentimes on that. So we gotta take things like that out of the diet for a period of time so we can really heal. Um, even things like nuts. I know when I eat a lot of nuts, sometimes I'll develop like just, um, I gotta clear my throat a lot. It's a sign of inflammation, it's an early warning sign. So getting rid of the food sensitivities can be huge for helping reduce inflammation and autoimmunity. On top of that, other things we wanna do. We wanna stabilize our blood sugar. This is so critical. When blood sugar's off balance, it's gonna cause chronic stress. So blood sugar goes high, it causes inflammation. Blood sugar goes really low, it causes inflammation and chronic stress hormone production. So we gotta keep blood sugar very, very stable. And the way to do that is loading up with good fats, things like coconut oil, avocados, um, ghee, we talked about that grass-fed butter that's clarified called ghee. Um, things like that, good high quality animal proteins. So organic chicken or pasture raised chicken, grass fed beef, things like that can be really good for blood sugar uh, sensitivity. Lots of veggies. We wanna use other good fats like olive oil. This is how we help stabilize our blood sugar. There's advanced strategies to do that. I talk about them in other videos and articles, but you wanna make sure that you're stabilizing your blood sugar. Then you also wanna address your vitamin D. We know there's a strong link between individuals with autoimmune disease and low levels of vitamin D. And so the medical, basically the, the, the medical system says a vitamin D level of 30 nanograms per milliliter or above is good, it's sufficient. Unfortunately, the research shows that for optimal immunity, right, meaning an immune system that's well coordinated, so therefore it's not gonna attack itself like in autoimmune diseases, uh, autoimmune conditions and chronic inflammatory conditions, for optimal immunity, our vitamin D levels should be between 60 and 100 nanograms per milliliter. The sweet spot is about 80 nanograms per milliliter. So typically, we wanna get, you know, it depends on your skin color, right, and things like that, but uh, you typically wanna get somewhere between 15 to, to 45 minutes, even an hour for real dark skin uh, individuals of high quality sun exposure on a majority of your body, meaning that you wanna be laying out with like a bathing suit on to get that on a regular basis, at least three days a week to really optimize your vitamin D. Most of us are not gonna be able to do that, um, particularly during the winter. So then we wanna supplement. And the best way to supplement is really to take about a thousand international units per 25 pounds of body weight, in a sense to, to maintain your levels around 60, okay? If we wanna boost them up faster, oftentimes I'll use 2,000 um, international units per 25 pounds of body weight. So for me, you know, let's say I'm 160, 165 pounds, but if I was 150, let's just say, you know, then I would want 6,000 IUs a day in a sense for maintenance, and I'd want about 12,000 to really boost my levels up faster. So optimize your vitamin D, that's critical. Then um, the next step is we wanna, and this is kind of the last thing we're gonna talk about is glutathione. And glutathione is the master antioxidant within every cell of our body. And so we know that people have chronic inflammation and autoimmunity, they have low glutathione stores. And we have low glutathione, we can't control our immune system. A healthy immune system has optimal glutathione levels, meaning that they have glutathione sufficiency. So how do we boost this major antioxidant? Well, the best way to do it is through good food, right? And good um, advanced lifestyle strategies. So good sleep is key to this high quality exercise, getting our adrenals healthy, all key for glutathione. Um, but on top of that, eating lots of sulfur-based foods can be really good if you tolerate them well, right? Again, if you don't have a food sensitivity to them. So that's things like cruciferous vegetables. So broccoli, in fact, broccoli sprouts, right? The sprouts of broccoli, amazing. Kale sprouts, incredible uh, for, for enhancing glutathione stores. Sprouts are one of the best ways to do it. Uh, but even steamed broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, um, cabbage, things like that, amazing. Fermented vegetables like kimchi, sauerkraut, awesome for us. Things like ginger and turmeric are really good for boosting glutathione. You can also use things like um, onions and garlic. They're ri very rich, very rich in sulfur compounds, really good for boosting glutathione. Also advanced supplementation. You know, when I'm working with patients with chronic inflammatory conditions, I like to put them on things like N-acetylcysteine, alpha lipoic acid, amazing for boosting glutathione. Sometimes we'll use an acetylated, it's called, you know, we use one called super glutathione. It's a, it's a acetylated glutathione that gets through our digestive system, allows for optimal absorption. So you can use supplements, you can use foods, best just to use a combination of both. Also lifestyle strategies. We talked about sleeping well, we talked about uh, proper, you know, good exercise, balancing 
your adrenals, things like intermittent fasting, if you know how to do it right, can be amazing for helping boost up glutathione levels, helping balance and coordinate your immune system and shutting down inflammation. So again, top five strategies. We talked about heal your gut. We talked about remove food sensitivities and allergens. We also talked about balancing your blood sugar. We also mentioned low vitamin D and optimizing your vitamin D levels. And last but not least, we talked about boosting up glutathione levels. You start following and applying those five things, all things you can easily do starting today. And I guarantee you that within 30 to 90 days, right, you're gonna see significant improvements in your inflammation. You're gonna see improvements in your antibody responses. You're just gonna notice that you are feeling and healing at a significantly higher level. So go ahead and do that, and we'll see you next time.